guys, it's me, Shawl360, and I'm going to talk about episodes 3 and 4 of Cheese in the Trap. And there is so much to talk about, guys. Like, again, action-packed series. But the pacing's a little bit slower on these two episodes, so I feel like I can talk about it a little bit better. But yeah, there is a lot going on. So I think I'm going to stick with the same thing I did the last time with the review, and I'm going to talk about the different traps, because there were a lot of traps here. There were some that were blatant traps, and then there were some that were kind of like one action leads to another action that leads to another action. And then there was kind of a sweetheart trap that you're kind of like, it's not a trap, but it kind of is, depending on how you look at it. So I'm going to start with the blatant trap. Um, the blatant trap is the date rape trap. Um, this guy named Du Hyun, he introduces himself to Hong Sul, and he's kind of like, I'm your friendly senior, let's be buddies. Really, it's a trap, because his intentions are to let her think that he's a friend, then get her drunk, take her to a motel, have dubious to non-consent sex with her and then because he's a senior and she doesn't want to mess up her reputation at school she's not going to be able to tell on him and he'll have got his satisfaction so that was an obvious trap and she's lucky that Yu Jung got her out of it but I mean it is a shame that something like that could go on and it just again it speaks to you know kind of the more unpleasant part of society where women are made to feel ashamed for being violated by fucking animals. Because somebody that would do something like that to you, they're an animal. They prey upon you, they're an animal. But I, I don't want to... I don't want to get off into the tangent I can go into about that. But yeah. It's just disgusting. It's disgusting. Filth. Um, so there's that trap. Then there is the group project trap. Which I think maybe there's another layer to that that we'll see revealed later on because it seems like with every episode something that happened before we get like the behind the scenes of it later on that um hong Sul, professor kong's class she's not doing good in it professor kong kind of has it in for her and she got a bad grade on the report last time because that bitch had stolen her report from the professor's office so she needs to do well in the group project but she is stuck in a group with three of the worst people you could be in a group with and of course she ends up with a bad grade because things just can't go right for this girl but what we don't understand and what I'm waiting to see something revealed later on is why the one group member did the work but never shared it with Hong Su or ever acted like she was going to do it I'm waiting to see like if she was paid off to ruin Hong Sul's chances of keeping her scholarship or not like that. I'm waiting to see how that's going to be revealed. But yeah, that, that was pretty terrible as well. Then we have the whole school kind of trap, the school slash family trap. Um, Hong Sul, of course, is going to lose her scholarship because she got this bad grade on the group assignment. She goes home to her family to ask them to help her with the money so she can go to school. And her dad is like, I don't even know why we're educating a girl when you don't need a college education to be a wife. And the mom is like, you ought to shut the hell up because you're the reason why our daughter has to work to go to school because you lost all our money. Turns out her dad, I guess, is in the habit of losing the family's money over and over again. He's done it again this time. And so the mom is like, well, if you don't have a scholarship to rely on to pay your tuition, then what you need to do is move out of your apartment Take the key money that you got to get your apartment and you should use that to pay your tuition and also to retrieve your brother from the United States where we sent him to go to school and now that your dad's lost all of our money, we can't afford to bring him home. Which, that's a lot of pressure on Hong Sul. It is a lot of pressure. And I mean, it would seem like it would be the easy thing to do to go home for her in order to, you know, go to school and not have that pressure of kind of trying to meet her living expenses. The problem is, if she goes home to go to school, she's looking at a four-hour commute to school. That's crazy. That is, that's way too much time to try to commute. I mean, you can imagine how hard it would be for her to do well in school commuting four hours. How hard it would be for her to stay in school commuting for four hours. Because think of it this way. Let's say she's in classes, and I'm going to go by the schedule that maybe an American student would keep. Let's say she's in classes and she has 20 hours of classes every week. Because most people will take about five classes and 
like depending on how many hours, it's about 20 hours a week, right? So 20 hours a week to go to school on five different days, four hour commute time every single day. So she's spending 20 hours in school, 20 hours to get to school every week. How is she supposed to maintain a job? If her family can't help her out with tuition now, they're not going to be able to help her out with tuition going forward. And once the key money that she got for her apartment runs out, how is she going to stay in school? So that's another trap that she's kind of in. So it's like, if I give up my apartment, I can probably go to school for another semester or two, but I won't be able to stay in school. If I don't give up my apartment, my brother is trapped in the United States because my parents don't have any money. What do I do? So that's something she's stuck in. Then another trap that we see is a trap for her and Yu Jung. So Yu Jung, he got really mad at Hong Sul at the end of episode two because he felt like she played him in order to introduce her friend to him. And I mean, that's not what happened, of course. We know that. But at the same time, you know, he is this guy who he kind of plans things ahead. He's kind of a puppet master, and I think he gets mad when things don't go his way, and so I think he took that frustration out on her, but when he was able to rescue her from uh, Doo Hyun and his plans to date rape Hong Sul, maybe that softened him up a bit, and it opened a line of communication between him and Hong Sul, so she, again, apologized for trying to set him up on this blind date, and was like, can I take you to go get something to eat? You know, to make up for the fact that, you know, you feel like I did you wrong because I never intended to make you feel that way because that wasn't my intention to do anything like that. So they go out to eat, and at the end of this dinner that they have, this little cute kimbap date, he walks her home. And when he walks her home, he's like, you need to start dating me. And she's like, I, I don't want to. And of course, he's about to get stone-faced again, because again, you know, his efforts have been thwarted. But she's like, you know what? I've never dated anyone before. I don't know how to do it, but if you want to date, then let's date. Why not? And, you know, she may have had a little bit of a crush on him, because I remember in the previous episode, she said, you know, don't fall for that smile. But at the same time, she has every reason in the world not to want to date this guy. Unlike some K-dramas where you're like, why wouldn't the heroine give the lead guy a chance? He's so perfect. This one... He was, like, really mean to her for a year before this current semester. Um, at the same time, she doesn't understand what it is about her that would make him want to date her. And not because she has necessarily low self-esteem, because she does a little bit, but also, you know, they've never really had a conversation with each other. They don't really know each other. So that's confusing. And then she's got so many other personal things going on with her, losing her scholarship, trying to find the money to stay in school, dealing with home issues, that she's like not even in like the right headspace to try to date somebody. So, I mean, I get her ambivalence completely, but then they proceed to begin dating and a whole bunch of stuff starts happening and she starts to kind of feel a little bit like she's being led by the nose here. Once they start dating, all of a sudden she gets a job as an office aide at the school over the semester break. They start dating. All of a sudden, she's offered free tuition at an English academy. I mean, he, again, being the puppet master that he is, he works everything behind the scenes to try to make life good for her. But she feels like she doesn't have any control. Like, if she lets him buy her everything and take her everywhere and do everything, then what control does she really have over her own life? And once she's let him do this for her, she kind of owes him, you know? She no longer can say no to anything. And while that seems like it would be perfect to have somebody who could just fix all your problems, at the same time, can you say no to that person if there's something that they want from you that you don't want to give them? I mean, just think about it for a minute. Let's say you have a guy who has the money to take you to great places and buy you nice things and do great favors for you. If he asks you to, you know, engage in a little makeout session and you're not in the mood, are you going to feel like you can tell him no? If he asks you to maybe do some things that you're not comfortable with, go some places you don't want to go, hang out with some people you don't want to hang out with, 
are you going to right away feel like you're comfortable enough to say no to this guy when you think of everything he's done for you? So, yeah, that's another kind of interpersonal trap. So, I mean, Hong Su, she she is dealing with a lot these kind of episodes. She is. And then, you know, there is the other trap that is just kind of burgeoning here that we are getting hints of. She's starting to grow a friendship with Baek In Ho, who is super hot. Um, did you guys know he's a member of a boy band called Surprise? It's, it's Surprise, but the S is a, a number five. And you should check them out. Their music's not great, but they are some hot boys. Anyway, uh, she starts to have kind of a friendship with Bacon Ho. And their friendship is very different than her relationship with Yoo Jung. Because with them, they're kind of on the same income level. Like, they both don't have a lot of money. Um, they have kind of a brother and sister kind of teasing relationship at first. So that helps out. But then both of them are kind of, I don't say faced with adversity. More as both of them kind of have their own struggles. And they each recognize in each other that they have these struggles and they're kind of trying to help each other out a little bit. You know, they're kind of on the same level with each other. So she's got this burgeoning friendship with him that feels really nice and organic and real. But she also knows that he has a troubled history with Yoo Jung. And for her, the trap is... I want to know more about this guy I'm dating who is still a real mystery to me, but can I believe this new guy that I know who I'm enjoying being around, but who kind of seems like, you know, he might have an ulterior motive because all I've been seeing from this other guy is how great he is. So, I mean, Hong Su's dealing with a lot. And then there's the traps outside of Hong Su's whole thing. There is the thing with the bake kids. The Bake siblings. So, Bakina, she is just, gosh, she's just trash. And I'm not saying that like she's, you know, a nasty person. More like she just, she doesn't want to do anything with her life. You know, she's just like, I'm going to use guys to get what I want. And I'm not ever going to do anything. And I'm just going to live in the lap of luxury and be fabulous. And we don't know how... Her and her brother ended up in this position where Yoo Jung's father is caring for them. But whatever happened that got them into this position, apparently Yoo Jung is starting to get to a point where he is trying to extricate him and his father from having to support these two. And on the one hand, Bae Kin Ho doesn't want the support of the father and doesn't want the support of Yoo Jung. And probably if he could he would leave the both of them alone. But he's got this sister that he feels obligated to care for. And even though he knows his sister won't do any better, he can't stand to see her not do well. So he continues to be involved with Yu Jung and his father to continue to see his sister being maintained. But he's extremely ashamed of what she does to get her maintenance how she's been acting. And now they're at a point where his sister is about to be cut off by Yu Jung. And so now Bacon Ho has got to figure out either a way to be able to support his sister or a way to get back in good graces with the chairman so the chairman will continue to support his sister. Um, because at this point, he can't convince his sister to try to do anything to support herself. And I am very interested to see how the whole thing between Beiko, Beikina, and Yu Jung plays out. I really am interested to know what the deal is with um, Beikin Ho's left hand, because apparently he was naturally left-handed, but something happened, and he lost his ability to have full... Um, I guess, I won't say control, but full utilization of his left hand. And apparently this affected his piano playing as well. It affected a lot of things in his life. So I I would like to know what happened with Bacon Ho that led the chairman to need to take care of them. What happened to make it to where the three of them had a friendship that went so terribly awry. And why it is that this situation is working out the way it is. So 
Yeah, I think I've discussed just about every single trap that I've saw so far in these last two episodes, but man, this show is just, it's so good. It's so good. Again, you know, you don't have the big emotional ballad to like tell you when you need to pay attention to a scene. There's a lot of little subtle things that are going on. Oh, oh my gosh. I almost let this review go by without talking about the very best part of episode four. The confrontation between uh, the bitch and Hong Sul. So the bitch shows up in the administrative office and she's about to go away for a year. Don't know why. Don't really fucking care. But she decides that she wants to talk to Hong Sul. She takes Hong Sul outside and she's like, I want to apologize to you because I sent that drunk guy into the building to uh, fight you. And I told your boyfriend about it, but he didn't do anything to help you. And Hong Sul, bless her, even though she's been kind of mousy previously in the series, she bucked up to old girl and she told her flat out, I don't care about Yu Jung and what he did or didn't do. I care about you. And I care about the fact that you sent a drunk man after me to create this drama, and he hurt me. He didn't, like, scare me. He cut me. He could have cut my face. He could have killed me. And then the half-assed apology you give me is not even an apology about what you did, but a chance for you to disparage Yu Jung and blame him for allowing the situation to go on. Fuck you, bitch. I hope I never see you again. And, of course, she's like, well... I'm not going to tell you what really happened with na 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 And, I mean, I'm like Hong Su. I don't ever want to see you again. You know, fuck off. But I was like, yes, tell it like it is, girl. Tell it like it is. Because I was appalled that she sent that drunk man into that building because he really could have killed that girl. Like, honestly, the fact that he got so drunk and belligerent that he managed to break a bottle and cut this girl... I mean, he could have pushed her down the stairs. He could have cut her on her face. He could have raped her. There's so much that could have happened to Hong Sul with this drunk guy. What, what, what the bitch did was unforgivable. Because her official character name is the bitch. So I, that's what it. I mean, what, what she did was unforgivable. And then the half-ass apology she gave, like, well, I'm sorry I sent that drunk man into you, but it wouldn't have been so bad if your boyfriend would have helped you out. Man, fuck you. You know, fuck you. Take responsibility for what you did. But yeah, that was the absolute best part of the entire two episodes was that little confrontational moment. That was fantastic. That needed to happen. Yeah, like, this show gives you gems. Like, there's always... Silver lining. Oh, and the other thing I was going to talk about, because I really liked it too, it wasn't as fabulous as that moment, but the little thing with uh, Hong Sul and Bora, how their friendship, you know, by her constantly trying to not share her problems with her friend, it ends up pushing her friend away. They have a little awkwardness, but then Untek, being the cutie patootie kind heart that he is, gets them together for a lunch date, and they go back to being friends. That was really good to see, because I love a good yomance, which is what you call friendship between two girls, instead of bromance, is yomance. Um, I said yomance, that's not right, yomance. Anyway, I love a good yomance, and I just think that they're adorable together, and I'm glad to see the trio of friends. I really like that little trio of friends. That's that's another bright spot in the show. But yeah, I think I've talked about everything that was important to me, or that at least I can remember was important to me. But if you have anything else you want to talk about down below, I want to hear from you. And I hope you enjoy this review. This review is really, really long, and I'm sorry about that. But I was trying to condense two hours of non-stop plot into a review and not feel ashamed of myself for forgetting everything once this is all over. Um, and even though I didn't say her name last time because I was ill-prepared, shouts out to Kim Goen. She is the lead actress for this show who plays Hong Sul. She's doing a phenomenal job with this show. Like, just 
in another league of good, in my opinion. I mean, there's probably a lot of people who will say that her acting is a little, you know, lackluster. I don't consider it that. I consider it extremely realistic. And because it's so realistic, it makes me love her. So, yeah. I... I'm very, I'm very happy with this show so far. I can't wait to see where it's going, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it, and I hope you're here for it, too. So, like I said, leave your comments down below, and let's talk about this, and I will talk to you later. This, this review was a mess. Again, another fail, but whatever. I'm not going to film it again, because I've already filmed this, like, too many times. Talk to y'all later. Bye.